All right, so today we finally get to the punchline. Finally, all the work we've been doing with sequences and then series and their convergence and divergence and all the different tests and stuff. Remember, that was all in service of finding a new tool, a new way of dealing with transcendental functions, right? That by definition, a transcendental function means that it can't be written as a polynomial. But we're going to say, ha, yes, it can. It's just that that polynomial is infinitely long. So we want to look at power series. And for this video, we'll focus in on geometric power series because they're uh, pretty easy to get a handle on. Um, we already know about geometric series. But in general, a power series is a series of the form... Uh, let's say I equal zero to infinity of A sub I X minus C to the N. Okay, so in general, a power series is a series of that form. This C, well, A sub I is a sequence, right? So those are our coefficient terms that are coming out in front of the x. The minus c, that's a center. We call that the center. And we'll see later that that sort of makes sense. We have a radius of convergence about this center. So it'll be equally balanced either side of the center. And it always converges at the center. So we'll see that in just a second. Now, if C is zero, it's sort of clearer that we've got this polynomial here. So we may have it this way. Uh, A sub I um, X. Oops, that should be annoying. Okay. There, it, this is still a power series. It's centered at zero now, X minus zero. And so what we're getting here is a sub zero, which is just your constant term, x to the zero power, which is just one. And then a sub one x. So we're getting that first coefficient and then x to the first power plus a sub two x squared plus and so on forever. OK, we're finally narrowing in. That looks like an infinite polynomial now, right? This is almost identical, except we've got the x minus c's in, right? So we still got a sub zero, that's our constant term. x minus c to the zero power is just one. And then a sub one, x minus c to the first power, plus a sub two, x minus c squared, and so on forever. All right. Now, the nice thing about these guys is that they're fairly well behaved in terms of their uh, convergence. That is to say, they're never convergent on weird disjoint intervals. First of all, let's notice that a power series will always converge at its center. Yeah? A power series will always converge at its center. Well, let's see. If I plug in x equals c, right? That's the x that I'm evaluating at the center. Well, all of these, c minus c, c minus c, every term forever and ever and ever, those are all just going to be 0, right? c minus c, they'll all just be 0. And I'll get that this sum is the constant term out front if I evaluate there at the center. So clearly that converges, yeah? If I evaluate this at x equal to the center, all I get is a sub 0. So that, that sum converges to a sub 0. All right. So let's see. A power series, power series converges, well, first of all, at the center, x equals c. Always, always, always. It'll converge at least at that one point. Yeah? Okay. 
it may converge on the entire real line. That's kind of like our best case scenario or our best hope, right? Like if I find the power series for e to the x, for example, it would be best if I can plug any x in there, like if it converges on the entire real line, right? Um, that may or may not be the case depending on the power series that we're looking at, but that is an option. It can just converge on the entire real line absolutely everywhere. That's sort of ideal. Um, on R, negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Or there may be some real number, R. Okay. There may be some real number, R, where the absolute value of x minus c is less than r. In other words, we're on this open interval from c minus r to c plus r, right? Let me see if I should, oh, okay. Um, in this case, we call R the radius of convergence. It'll be a distance away from your center, right? So R is the radius of convergence. And it's going to converge on the open interval from C minus R to C plus R but where the absolute value of x minus c is equal to r, it may or may not. We always have to check the endpoints to determine whether or not it converges at those. And usually those are will just fall back to some basic, like the divergence test or uh, alternating series test or something. Usually they collapse down to um, those sorts of cases. Okay. So um, where the absolute value of x minus c is equal to r at the endpoints of that interval, um, it may or may not converge. So, may, will, may not. We have to check. But those are the only possibilities. It always converges at the center. It can converge on some interval it may or may not converge on the endpoints, we have to check those, or it converges absolutely everywhere, which is great. Like I said, there's no weird disjoint intervals, like it converges over here, but not here, and then over here, and we have to sort of find them or anything. No. We, once we've found that radius, that interval, the only thing that's at stake is whether or not the endpoints do. Okay. Nice. Good. So let's see, let's look at, for an example, let's say we have power series sum uh, 2x to the n, I guess we're at n equals 0 to infinity. 2x to the n over n, for example. Right. So this is a power series centered at 0, right? It's There's an x minus 0, and I can make it clear simply by teasing out that power of a product, right? If I go, um, this is the sum 2 to the n over n, x to the n. Right now I can see that my a sub n's, my sequence terms, are 2 to the n over n. Those are my coefficients in front. And then x, I'm getting x to the n. So x, x to the second, x to the third, and it's centered at 0. Yeah. Cool. So I've got this power series and I go, okay, where is this thing going to converge? Go, well, we have a, t a very, very powerful tool. That's the ratio test, where we look at the limit 
as n goes to infinity, the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. This is a test for absolute convergence, right? And this, the series will converge if that limit is strictly less than 1. If it's greater than 1, then it diverges. If it's equal to 1, well, then we don't know, right? That's our ratio test. But if it's strictly less than 1, we can guarantee that that series will converge. So we can leverage that idea and say this forces a criterion, right? I can force a condition where that series is going to converge. This has to be the case for it to converge. So I'm just looking at this limit. I say, okay, limit as n goes to infinity, the absolute value, we have the n plus 1th term, so 2 to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Over, now just the a sub nth term. So 2 to the n, x to the n, over n. Well, this needs to be less than 1, right? Let's see what we get. Uh, things will flip up. And we've got the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, all of these terms are going to be positive, right? So we don't really need to worry so much about the absolute values, but still. Um, we'll just leave them alone, I suppose, and flip stuff around. So the n will come upstairs. I've got 2 to the n plus 1. n uh, x to the n plus 1 over. We have 2 to the n n plus 1 x to the n. And this stuff goes downstairs because we're multiplying by the reciprocal that comes upstairs. Okay, I think that's good. So, let's see, stuff will start to simplify now. We have the limit as n goes to infinity of, well, the 2 to the n over 2 to the n, that'll just be 1. So I have a 2 to the first power upstairs. The same thing is going to happen um, for x to the n over x to the n, right? So I have x to the first power upstairs. And now I have n over n plus 1. Now, as far as n is concerned, that's n is what's moving here, right? n is going to infinity. As far as n is concerned, the absolute value of 2x is a constant. It's not changing, right? It's n that's changing. So I can pull that out. n goes to infinity, n over n plus 1, again, sorry, this should all be less than 1, right? I go, well, wait, and as n goes to infinity, n over n, I don't care about the rest of that, I just care about the degrees, right? They're equal, so it's the ratio of the leading coefficients, 1 over 1, it's just 1. So the absolute value of 2x strictly less than 1, so it's the absolute value of x strictly less than a half, which means negative a half and a half. The radius there is a half. The radius there is a half. And uh, you can
can see that it's centered around zero, right? We have negative a half on this side and a positive a half on that side. So half either side is centered on zero. Now, we do need to double check these endpoints. Let's see, if, if x is negative a half, what do we get? We get two times negative a half to the n over n. Well, that's just a negative one to the n. That is the alternating harmonic series. We know that converges. That converges by the alternating series test. Yeah? It's enough that those terms go to zero as long if we're flip-flopping, right? As long as those terms are decreasing going to zero, that's enough. So alternating series test, or the fact that we know that that's the alternating harmonic, says that converges. All right, so over here, on our, if we're constructing our interval of convergence, that does converge at negative a half. Now let's see if x is one half, then I've got two times a half to the n over n. That's one to the n, which is always one. That is the harmonic series which we know diverges yeah? to p series with p equal to one. So it diverges at this end of point. So we're done. This is the interval of convergence. Okay, our radius is one half, centered on zero. And we found our interval. We just had to double check those endpoints. And like I said, it usually degenerates into one of our simple cases, right? Something that we know something about. Like here, it was the alternating harmonic and then the harmonic. We know the alternating converges. We know that the harmonic diverges. All right, let's try another one. Let's try, uh, actually in the interest of time, let's, let's jump, uh, let's look at geometric. Let's let's do that because then we can actually use that to derive some. Oh my God, I gotta watch my time here. Um, let's see. We know that the sum a sub n r to the n, a geometric series, will converge for absolute value of r less than one. It converges with absolute value of r strictly less than one. So on the interval from negative one to one. Right? This is our geometric series. We get a good handle on that. When it converges, we actually know what it converges to. It converges to a over one minus r. Nice. We can leverage that knowledge there to get a few, or quite a few actually, of the basic rules that we need, or the basic function representations with um, power series. So for example, let's say we're looking at the function one over one minus x. 
not necessarily the prettiest function, but it turns out this is the prettiest power series. It's the simplest one. Because if I look at this, I go, okay, it's already in the form A over one minus R. I don't have to even do anything. Here's my A, one minus R is X. Okay, so I, I can just jump immediately and say, well, this is the sum. A is just one. R is X to the N. Sweet. So this is just one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed plus. Noise. It's the simplest on the power series side, right? It's just one plus X plus but what you would hope for. On the function side, not as pretty necessarily, but that's it. One over one minus X is that, yeah? Now, we know that a geometric series converges for the absolute value of R strictly less than one. So in this case, R was X. So we know that it'll converge absolute value of X strictly less than one. In other words, on the interval from negative one to one. Nice. Oh. Good. There's a very, very simple one. Um, related to this one, how about f of x equal one over one plus x? Say, so, well, this is very close. It's just a minus minus, right? I can rewrite that and say one over one minus negative x. And now I'm in exactly the same shape, a over one minus r. And now my r is negative x. And I can just jump again. I have my sum. It's negative x. I'm going to put negative 1 to the n next to the n like that. Just pull that out. It's negative x to the n, but I'm just going to put the negative 1 to the n. So it's exactly the same, but now we're flip-flopping. So 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x to the 4th and so on. Flip-flop signs. And again, this is going to converge on the integral absolute value of negative x less than 1. Well, that's the absolute value of x less than 1. And so we have negative 1 to 1. On both of these, the radius is 1. Right? The ra or here, the radius is 1. And it's centered around 0. The center is 0. And these are our inter intervals of convergence. We can leverage our knowledge from geometric series on these, right? Absolute value of R strictly less than one. Cool. So there we've got two of them. We have that one over one minus X is the sum of X to the N. That one's really the basic straightforward one on the right hand side, which is uh, negative one to one converges. And we now have 1 over 1 plus x, which is very, very similar. It's just negative 1 to the n, x to the n. It also converges on the same interval. So we got those two already. Let's get closer to ones. Now, we, we'll be able to leverage these later um, once, I, once we get a chance to look at some of the properties on how to work with power series. Because once we've derived these basic rules, it's kind of nice. All we need to do is plug in. Like if I want to find 1 over 1 minus x squared, all I need to do is take my regular 1 and evaluate it at x squared. So we are doing most of the work now in getting these basic structures. And then from there, right, I, I'll be able to just integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared, for example. That's the arctan. So I can get the... Uh, power series for arctangent from this one. Pretty straightforward. 
just by plugging in x squared, evaluating, and then integrating. So we'll see that later. For now, we're still just deriving some of these basic structures. So we got one over one minus x, we've got one over one plus x. Let's try. one over x. That's a very important one. If we can derive one over x, then we'll be able to get ln, right? Because if we integrate one over x, that's ln. And so if I have the series for one over x, I can just integrate term by term. Bam, I got the series for uh, ln. All right, so let's look at that one, one over x. Now, I've got an issue. I can't center this guy at zero, right? Clearly, I can't have anything converging at zero since this thing is undefined at zero. So I can't center at zero. Let's pick one. One is a convenient center, okay? Let's, we'll pick, we could pick something different. We could pick two or something else, but one is convenient anyway. So the first thing I need to do is fix that center, right? I need it to be x minus c, and I don't have that down here. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to say 1 over x minus 1. Right here I'm getting my x minus c so that I'm centering at 1. And we'll go, wait a minute. Right now, as it stands, I've changed. I've changed things. These two things are not equal. Right. I've subtracted a 1 down here, which means that I need to add back that 1 in order to compensate. In other words, I'm just adding 0. And I go, okay, that's looking really close. This is a 1. There's my A. Here I have my R with the center of 1. Everything's looking good, except for I need this to be a minus. Well, I can fix that just fine by making minus minus, right? So I got 1 over 1 minus negative x minus 1, like that. And now I can jump. This is my r, there's my a, so here's my series. a is just 1. I've got, well, it's negative x minus 1 to the n, but then I'll just do power of a product, right? I'm going to pull that negative 1 out so that it's clear that we've got the flip-flops. Uh, negative 1 to the n, x minus 1 to the n. All right, there we go. So it's uh, 1 minus x minus 1 to the first, plus x minus 1 squared, and so back, back and forth. And now, again, this is r, right? It'll converge for absolute value of r less than 1. So absolute value of negative x minus 1 less than 1. Well, that's just absolute value of x minus 1 less than 1. And let's just say it's negative 1 is less than, x minus 1 is less than 1, add 1, 0 is less than, x is less than 2. Okay, so this is the interval on which it converges, 0 to 2. Its radius is 1, either side of its center which is 1, right? So 1 to the left of 1 is 0, and 1 to the right is 2. Nice. There we go. So we have 1 over x. Series for 1 over x. Let's do a slightly more complicated one. 
to show you. You start to see how these the pattern goes. Um, we fix the center, then we try to get a one minus, and then the our A usually pops out. So let's try. This is not one of the basic ones, but like if I throw you a random one, um, this is one of the ways we can attack it, right? If we recognize that it's geometric or similar to a geometric, that we can make it geometric. So something like, let's say my function is um, 5 over 2x minus 3. And I want my center to be at negative 3. So first thing I'm going to do is just flip those around because I know that I want the R part to have the X in it, right? So I'm just going to flip these around for right now. Okay. And I say, okay, over here. Right now, my center is zero. It's X minus zero there but I want to be centered at negative three. So I want X minus negative three to be down here. In other words, I want X plus three minus negative, right? So what I'm gonna do is I've got five over, this is chilling here, plus two times. Now I needed X plus three minus negative three in order to center that in the correct place. So this is compensating for the center right now. So far, so good. But what have I actually done? I didn't just add three here. I added two times three, right? We've got to distribute that through. So two times three will give me plus six here. Oops, sorry, minus. I've added I added six, so I need to subtract six in order to compensate. There we go. All right. So what do we? We can just combine those together and take stock, see how close we are to what we're looking for. Negative nine um, plus two x plus three. So so far, we've taken care of the center. We now are centered at x at negative three. The center is negative three, right? We want a one here, and we want a minus here. If we take care of those two things, we'll be good. I think I can do both at the same time. If I divide by negative nine, that'll become negative, that'll become one. So I got to do the same thing to top and bottom, and that should be really nice. So negative five ninths, right? I'm dividing by negative nine. Negative nine over negative nine is just one, minus two ninths x plus three. Now I look at it and I say, I have a, over 1 minus r. Now I can jump. So actually 5, oops, 5 over 2x minus 3 is the sum. We have a, I, I suppose I can just pull that outside. You can either put it in here, but we can always pull a constant out, right? So I'll put negative five ninths outside, there's my A, and my R is two ninths, oops, two ninths, X plus three to the N. Now we can do a power to product, you know, negative five ninths, just to make it a little bit clearer, two to the n, actually it's two ninths to 
to the end. There's our power series. It's centered at negative three, x minus negative three. Here's our coefficient series, and then we have that a. We could move that inside if we really wanted to, but um, that's fine. Okay. Now, that will converge for r, absolute value of r, less than one. So the absolute value of 2 ninths x plus 3 less than 1. That'll be 9 halves All right. And let's see, that means, oh, that's absolute value. So negative 9 halves less than x plus 3 less than 9 halves, and now we need to subtract 3. So subtract 6 halves, um, negative 15 halves, less than x, less than, I need to subtract 6, 3 halves. There we go. All right. Our radius is 9 halves. There, we're looking here. Our radius is 9 halves. Equal either side of our center, negative 3. Right? If I go from negative 3 over this side, 9 halves, I'll get negative 15 halves. If I go to negative 3 and add 9 halves, I'll get uh, 3 halves. Okay, so that's our interval. Negative 15 halves. All right. In the next video, we'll look at um, some properties, how to deal with them. Like I said, we can just plug and chug, evaluate stuff. And then we get to the full blown one. What happens if like I threw you e to the x or something? Like there's no way you're going to turn that into a geometric series. So how would we deal with it? Um, we'll look at how to do them in absolute general.